On December 7, 2021, the motor vessel St. Clair was towed from Toledo, Ohio, headed for Port Colburn for scrapping. At 770 feet, she will be the second largest vessel ever scrapped on the Great Lakes. The longest was the 826-footer Arthur B. Homer, which was towed to the same Canadian port for scrapping in 1986. That boat had been the sister ship to the Edmund Fitzgerald. The St. Clair was the victim of a raging onboard fire, and the following is from the NTSB's findings of that event. On the day of the incident, February 16, 2019, the St. Clair was docked at Torco, located at the mouth of the Maumee River in Toledo, Ohio, for winter layup. The shipkeeper, who was living aboard, conducted his routine inspection of the vessel. He confirmed that there was no water ingress, the heat lamps were still operating, and the bubblers used to keep the water from freezing in the sea chests had sufficient air pressure. At 0700, 20 employees from a contracting maintenance company arrived at the ship to continue ongoing contracted work and repairs. On that day, the contractor's crew was going to conduct steel repair in two locations of the ship. One, the conveyor belt on the port side by the number two cargo hold, and two, the aft section of the number six ballast tank, which was located within the lower level of the engine room space. While the hot work was being conducted on number six port ballast tank and the port midships tunnel, the personnel had fire watch present with fire extinguishers and placed fire blankets and sandbags on the conveyor belt to prevent a fire from occurring. The shipkeeper was planning to depart the vessel in the morning and was not planning to return to the vessel until the following day. At 16.45, the foreman, while checking on the cleanup at each workstation within the ship, noted light white smoke in the engine room near the workshop. To remove the smoke, the foreman started the starboard side engine room exhaust fan, which was a regular practice. After that, the foreman reviewed time cards and departed the vessel at 1800. As he departed, there was still a haze of smoke in the engine room, so he left the exhaust fan on to continue to remove the remaining smoke. Smoke was observed coming from the St. Clair about 2010 by the chief engineer aboard the Great Lakes Trader, which was docked at the Torco Dock across from the St. Clair. The Great Lakes Trader's chief engineer called the contractor foreman who had been working on the St. Clair earlier in the day to inform him of the smoke. The foreman called the shipkeeper who was at his home and told him about the smoke seen by the other vessel. The St. Clair's shipkeeper contacted the shipkeeper aboard the Indiana Harbor, another laker located near the St. Clair, that was also owned by American Steamship, and he asked him to check the vessel. About eight minutes after the phone call, the Indiana Harbor shipkeeper arrived at the St. Clair and saw smoke and fire on the aft deck behind the deck house. The lights were still on, indicating that shore power was still available to the vessel. After going up the only gangway connected to the vessel, he entered the vessel through the watertight port side door from the gangway. Both port and starboard side entrances on the third deck led directly to the engine room on the same level as the steering gear, workshop, and control room. There in the engine room, he saw that stacks of lumber near the hatch were on fire and that the engine room was filled with smoke. Due to the heat and smoke, he returned to the gangway. Next, he re-entered the vessel with the intent to reach the manual pull to activate the engine's fixed CO2 extinguishing system, located two decks above the entry to the main deck. However, it was not possible to reach it due to the heat of the fire and the effect of the smoke on his ability to see and breathe. He departed the vessel, leaving the portside gangway open. 
While the Indiana Harbor shipkeeper was checking on the vessel, the contractor foreman called a friend who was a firefighter for the local fire department to inform him of the potential fire. The firefighter immediately contacted the 911 dispatcher and reported the fire. The first fire truck arrived at the vessel at 2055, 45 minutes after the Great Lakes Trader chief engineer saw the smoke. The smoke that the contractor foreman noticed was most likely emitted from a smoldering hot spot, possibly from a burning piece of wood or trash, which eventually developed into a fire that severely damaged the vessel. By turning on the starboard exhaust fan in an effort to remove the smoke and leaving it on when he departed at 1800, the movement of the air within the engine room may have assisted in accelerating the growth of the smoldering hot spot into a fire. Investigation into the fire identified a significant amount of damage to the vessel. The engine room, the second deck, where the port and starboard side tunnel conveyor belts, port and starboard side cross belts, and incline conveyor belts were located, and the entire deck house were severely damaged by the fire. The conveyor belts within the vessel were completely burned. Investigators noted that the smoke and fire damage was also located with the forward ladder trunk and all of the cargo holds. The most extensive fire damage discovered were fractures in the overhead of the third deck, which was the second deck. These fractures were located just outside and above the workshop. The National Transportation Safety Board determines that the probable cause of the fire aboard the bulk freighter St. Clair was the ignition of combustible material in the vicinity of the engine room workshop, likely due to the use of portable space heaters or smoldering smoking materials, which spread to other areas of the vessel. Contributing to the extent of the fire damage was the lack of operating procedures for continuous active monitoring of the vessel while in layup status. And that was what caused the end of the motor vessel St. Clair.